So if you go on good old games or even go on Steam, you can play these versions and do all the same skips I'm doing. They're very easy to go. By the way, there's a link to the Discord for the Quest for Glory uh, speedrunning Discord. We've got a good hundred members in there and a lot of people. We're a really friendly community that loves to get people involved in this game. No matter what version of the game you have, um, we got something there. And we're also a very good repository of what actually goes on in the series. So uh, we got to grab what we need here and then run. Now, there's no real way to skip Quest for Glory 4, so you will actually see me beat this legitimately, but it'll be routed in the way that we believe is the fastest. You will see some glitches though, like in this one. In this screen, you can actually hit Shift W and you can um, use a developer key code that will cast fetch that will actually break the script. Now time is stopped. Time will resume at some point. However, uh, what I'm going to do is rest four times. One, two, three, four, and then we're set. What that's going to do is allow me to skip the entire first day because your mouse movements with resting are one of the biggest places that you will lose time on this run. Okay. Another thing is, is that we're not while we have some major points of the routing down, we each do our own little optimizations and we're not exactly sure what the fastest optimizations are. Um, because this is a 30 minute game, we're still playing around with what the optimizations look like. All right, I'm going to run into this room here, which is going to prevent a glitch happening from later on. By the way, this game could crash on me at some points. It doesn't happen super often, but it's also not, I wouldn't call it rare either. Now we're gonna buy everything we need for the run. We already have enough money. Two, two cloves of garlic, some candy, pie pan, and rations until I have one crown left. Again, mouse movements are key in this. Most of my time is lost through mouse. Okay, here we go. Hey, Phoenix, how you doing? It do Whoops, talk to the old man, you have to. And now I'm just going to hit the question mark to skip most of the puzzles. I will do some of them because they're required or because actually completing the puzzle is a little faster. Yeah, him's and Oz in his way. That is exactly what's going to happen. Okay, we're going to hit the question mark a bunch of times. You can skip most puzzles in the game that way. Bait the trap, wait for the antwerp to come out. He should uh, reach the top of his... There we go, got the puzzle. We're gonna pass our way through this way. And now this is one that we have to do correctly. It's real easy, just make it look like a keyhole. Great. Dr. Cranium. Ladies and gentlemen, the good doctor. Magic, science, we need three flasks. One, two, three. Do I have three? Yes, I do. Wanna make sure. Now, this is one of the places where some of our routes diverge. I'm gonna rest here until night. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One of the reasons that we have to rest as often as we do is that there's some events that don't happen until day five. Once day five hits, Oh, always meant to ask how much time is saved by buying the garlic, picking it up at the inn. A lot, because we use pretty much all the garlic before we even need it. And if you don't use the garlic ahead of time, you will, um, you can only pick up one clove. Anyway, um, certain events only happen at day five. So we have to do, um, we have to do them in the right order. So optimizing when you're resting, when you're sleeping, sleeping through the night is very important. All right. We have the glide spell, so we learned it from Dr. Cranium. Now we can go through the swamp at light speed, and I'm gonna cast this. Should take about 22, 23 times, depending on how much my flame dart skill has gone up. Should have been 22 times if I counted that correctly. Slide over here. This puzzle is completable. If you just click over on the side, you'll beat it, and you will get the points for it too. So now we need to rest 12 times. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
it's coincidence that it brought me up to exactly perfect health. Um, the reason we need 12 is because we need to be at night now, because now the will-o'-wisps are over here. I'm going to get out some candy. We're going to lure them over to the shore. I'm going to put them in a bottle. I'm going to head over to the next screen and use the will-o'-wisps on the tower. Bring out the avoozle sign. One, A, V, O, O, Z, L. And the reason you saw me waiting there is that if you go through that puzzle too fast, you um, it won't register some of the hits and, or some of the letters, and then you have to redo the puzzle. So it's better to just wait a second in between each one. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to trigger this wraith, which will reset the encounters in the woods. Now we're going to talk to the ghost. We need to get the ghost and his wife and and her wife, or I'm sorry, her husband, uh, who was the old man in the town, back together because we need his hat. And we're going to come here, and we're good to go. Okay, we're going to ask her her name. She knows her name now. We know her name now. We're going to come up here, trigger another wraith, which resets the encounters again. Katrina will be up here. This is more of a one of those things that we have to kind of go through, or at least I do, on the route that I take. Oh, climb over gate. And sleep until morning. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to skip most of the dialogue with the sad ghost thing again. <laughs> we just finished this part. Is this the part where you get that? Okay, the hat. We're going to get that on um, night six, I believe. Okay, here we go. Up here. Tell about the ghost wife. He's going to wander into the um, forest, which is the heroic thing to do. Um, send an old man into the forest unaccompanied to meet his ghost wife and ultimately his doom. But it is a nice reunion scene, so... This is one where I will do the puzzle because it's only three mo motions here and you get through. You have to visit Dr. Cranium on the third night, or on the th three different days. On the third day is whenever he has the epiphany for the rehydration solution, which is one of the major, um, one of the major um, copyright protections in this game. So we're gonna rest outside his door until it's the next day. And we will get a warning. I don't have to count this. I just need to focus on clicking correctly. Um, it'll say, you're getting tired. You rest 60 more minutes, and then it's the next day. You're getting tired is pretty much the sign for midnight. There it was. And now we're in. Okay. Oop. Rehydration solution. Desert groups. Okay, which is earth, fire, earth, fire. Earth, fire, earth, fire, water. There's 26 different codes. You get them pretty much anywhere. I also created a patch that will uh, skip those puzzles entirely. Now we need to go handle the monastery. Use the dark one sign, you can get in. That is the fastest way. Followed by restoring the Domovoy over here. With the rehydration solution, we're going to give Hector the hexapod a piece of garlic, which allows us into the basement. And then we are going to tap the cask of Amontillado, which is going to bring us into a dreamlike state where we can witness the end of the world. And that poor blackbird never actually does get saved. Um, it is necessary for the points and the 100% run. Uh, Thief 100% run, interestingly enough, does not use any magic. And magic tends to be something that really makes these games go fast. Um, especially if you're importing, because the open spell is broken. Open is like that wonder spell that just makes things work. <laughs> it's, especially anything past like Quest for Glory 2, open just wins. Open is the win button. Okay, here we go. We are on our way out, and now we need to levitate up to our room that we have not bought, by the way. Interestingly enough, we come out of this door and we go down. Nobody asks questions. We just pay for our room and go right back in. It's after midnight, so all these people should be asleep, but that scripted first encounter there, whenever we leave again, brings up the Domovoy. Now, we already have done everything for him. We're just going to talk to him twice and grab the doll, which is a key for the end of the game. They do stare quite suspiciously at you, and those guys in the back corner, 
voice acting in this game is spot on. It's so funny. And then most of their lines are ad-libbed, which is even better. Okay, now we are on day five. This is where the real game begins. Part of the reason I do all that resting is so that I can get to day five instantly here. Now, technically, you can leave your room and go in and out and rest there. Uh, I think it's a little slower, or at least it, it, it does cause some other problems. Either way, it, it, it could actually be faster. That's one of the things that we uh, have, like, those internal routing debates on. All right, here we go. We have saved the guy. Open spell opens up the tomb. We have to run back to town. We ran into Dimitri's office earlier to prevent this glitch on day five of him not showing up at the window. He has now told us that he has freed a gypsy that they suspected of killing the uh, uh, that they suspected of killing the grave digger. And now we are going to go talk to the gypsies because they love us now. And we got no encounters, which was awesome. A TAS of this I would love to see. I have bounties up on TASVideos.org um, TAS under the bounties section. If anybody is interested in doing a tool-assisted run of this, um, I pay. <laughs> it's, I love this series. This is my favorite of the series, and this is the one I most want to see a tool-assisted run of, because I want to see this one broken. By the way, getting into the gypsy camp early would be one of the ways to break this game. A TSA of this game. <laughs> we do our little dance here. And we move over to the next day. Now, we're not done with the gypsies yet. We have to go in and talk to them two more times to learn about a special spell. Arana. Staff, Destiny Spell. That's a trigger to free the little girl later in the game, which you guys wouldn't be up to yet. At least it shouldn't be if you're still dealing with the hat. It's more likely than not that uh, if you're dealing with the hat, he hasn't made it, Joe hasn't made it there yet, so. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, and one more just to be safe. There we go. If you remember your sad ghost, this is it. Look familiar? It is really cute. It is really cute. I just want his hat, though. So I'm going to click the hat, hand on him, get the hat, and we are gone. I'm going to cast the aura spell because I, am, I will be doing one combat in this run. Uh, right there. Whoops. And we get an autosave here, which is good, because sometimes this fight can crash. Ah, oh, that was not good. Got him. Okay, that could have been a lot worse. Uh, that was definitely not my cleanest fight with him, though, but we made it out fairly quickly, all things considered. Ideally, you want to spin over to him twice, or sometimes even four times, and he will hit you, and you will end up exactly where you need to be, um, right next to him, so you can just spam and stun lock him then. Spam, attack, and stun lock him. You'll, you are. Okay, now we are going to use set hat. So if Joe hasn't figured this out yet, this is where you can tell him to go. Bones in the mortar. Grind it up. We are actually baking the pie that we know Baba Yaga neat once ahead of time because it will skip some sequence. I'm <laughs> taking notes. Nice. <laughs> this game, I agree, I'm Coolio. This, is, uh, this completely deserves it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that, the Wraith is like one of those things that can scare you. You can actually beat it without the Aura spell. Um, if you play it perfectly, you will win the fight. Uh, not by much. You'll usually win by the skin of your teeth if you do win at all, but it's kind of RNG as to whether or not you can pull it off. Some people are better at combat, though, and uh, I am not... The combat's usually where I struggle. 
Okay, we need to go in here one more time and get one more object from her. Notice we gave her, we gave her, we got a good humor bar for a gnome that we know nothing about. We're gonna give her another piece of garlic here. And then we're gonna get the dark one ritual, talk to ourselves, that gets us out, and we are done with Baba Yaga. Let's go up to the castle now. Luckily the castle's not too far, we shouldn't hit any RNG encounters. Looks like we're good. I'm going to queue up the open spell because we need it here. Click through. We are now heading into the crypt. B-O-R-G-O-V, spelling Borgov out in colors, gets you into the crypt. Took some time to reset my motion to running. Now, one of the things I will be doing before I finish up in the castle here is training my open spell up, because if you do not have at least 50 in your spell skills uh, heading into Quest for Glory 5, you will lose spells. So if, even if it's at 49, you're done. You, um, you'll lose the open spell, and we need the open spell to beat the game uh, as fast as we do. Let's give you an idea of the record on Quest for Glory 5. Five, with the um, route that I'm going to be using in this, the record is five minutes and four seconds. From clicking the start button to start the game on Quest for Glory 5 till you accept to um, become the king or refuse the throne. Todd Rogers. I was just watching that earlier today. Uh, yesterday, actually. Have to wait for the open spell here until the animation's done. This room is a little janky. I'm going to try and open up in the next room. Luckily, you can just kind of cast it on nothing. Notice my mana went down really far. I would have just rested once and I would have had enough. Poor little girl. I'm going to give her a doll to make her feel better. It's Technically, it's her doll to begin with. And tell her about Arana's staff. And this is how you get her out of here. But you needed to learn about the destiny spell. And you needed to tell her, get um, have the doll. Those are the two prerequisites in order to get to this scene, which is part of what triggers the end game. Correct. The tool assisted uh, runs were done by C Square, and he found out some amazing stuff on both of them that led to skips in other games, also, which is really cool. Definitely check out those tool assisted runs. Quest for Glory 1 is finished in like 47 seconds. All right, now we got to talk to the gnome. We are pretty much headed into the end game now. There's a little bit left to do. Very little, though. We're just uh, clearing up some extra uh, points of uh, interest here. So we need to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now we need to go in there and talk to him one more time because then is whenever we give him the good humor bar which cures him of his bad funnies and then he also teaches us the ultimate spell and the ultimate spell is one of the triggers for the end game the ultimate joke i should say not the ultimate spell the ultimate joke okay sleep until morning should be a note on the chest notes on the chest and this is the last day of the game so we were heading out. Oh yeah, yeah, we're almost done. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Mm. 12. Sometimes night does not transition on the first screen transition, and we need it to be night in order to talk to Adavis, who was in the second game, who we sent over a cliff, if you remember, or a palace uh, of a uh, palace balcony. He's back as a vampire. And he has caught us in a trap. We're now in the dungeon. We're going to use the open spell to open our chains. Whoop. Click on the hand, come over, set the running back to hand. That way you run down the stairs rather than walk it is faster. We're going to use the mouth on Katrina to talk to her to wake her up. That way we can skip a couple extra clicks. 
and now it's just a matter of talking to her three times. We're going to defend our actions or whatever it happens to land on. It really doesn't matter too much. Say whatever it is. The third time she asks us to agree, we agree to help. She kidnaps us out, kicks us out. By the way, whenever you teleport, you can actually walk through this area. There's no geometry there, which is really neat. So you can actually run up to the castle at that point. And now we are at the end game. There are some things in the end game that are not necessary. So if you um, you will see us, uh, you'll see me be, uh, glitch out quite a number of things in here. Interesting thing is, is that even though we start the game in the last area, we can't glitch the final game room. We just can't glitch our way in. Uh, all right, we're going to come over here and walk across. By the way, you do not need to get, uh, beat him down there. You do not need to beat the pit horror. You do not need to get his journal. Completely unnecessary. The game assumes you do if you make it into the last run. We're going to run. Put the torch in the sconce. Flip out. And now we are heading into the next puzzle. I have to switch ourselves back to running in almost every single one of these rooms. The puzzle, the rituals go in order that you are supposed to use them in. So you don't have to worry about remembering which scroll is which. They all kind of look the same, just go in order. Correct. I will pay out. I have a $300 bounty for anybody who can find a way to break this game and it take off a sizable chunk. I love this series so much, that's why I love to break it. And I've been looking for years, so if somebody has some scripting experience or tasking experience, love to have you aboard. Ahead of East Block, nice. All right, got to blow into these holes here in the right order. We're going to click the hand over at the door, which will move us over, and then just keep clicking, and it will take us out of the room. If you don't pay attention in this next area, you will miss it. Done. Force puzzle. All you need to do is click the ritual at the bottom and at where the um, where the altar is, and you can skip that entire last room. And we are in the last room of the game. This was a smooth run. I will say this: this felt like a smooth run. <laughs> nice, like lakes. Kind of looked like that, too. Never thought about that. Hated those guys. Always ate my shield as a kid. I'm torn as to what the fastest actions are to beat this room are, so... Really, it's just a matter of hitting the plus button, bringing your things up, casting the ultimate joke, bringing out the staff with the tab key. If you're wondering how I'm opening up my inventory, I'm using the tab key. Uh, that brings up inventory and escape closes the inventory. This is the only game that allows you to do both. Most games will either allow you to escape out of your inventory with the escape key or tap into it with the um, tab. And we are done Quest for Glory at exactly 50 minutes even. Now I have to bring up my actual screen so you will get, a sh you will get to see my desktop here. Quest for Glory 5 does not like to play very well with uh, transitions here, so 